we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. The question whether the role of slavery in the Constitution undermines its authority or makes it fundamentally flawed, it's been around for a long time. It goes back to the formation of the Constitution. Well, in 1776, I think everyone, all the founders certainly, knew that slavery was incompatible with the message that they were promoting life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. They, they, they just knew that there was an inconsistency between ha holding people in, in, in servitude or in slavery. Because lots of people, of course, were in bonded servitude as well. And, and all of that comes under assault as a result of the revolution. Pretty much everyone conceded that it was wrong, and then the only question is what to do about it. They discovered during the Revolutionary War that they needed to stay a union. They needed to be unified in order to be independent, and that independence was the key to securing freedom. Now, to stay unified, that meant they had to get everybody to stay together. Well, what if those states still couldn't get rid of slavery at the time? That's the situation where you had to have a compromise. To understand the compromises to understand the situation of the Constitution and slavery in 1776, it's important to know that in all 13 colonies in 1776, including even the New England colonies, there was slavery. When talking about the Constitution and its relationship to slavery, it is the most difficult topic that we can confront because here is this element of evil that is part of our history. And at the same time, the Constitution clearly acknowledges it. But that doesn't mean that slavery was an intrinsic part of the Constitution. It was seen for the most part as an institution that resided within the states. The Founders' Constitution made compromises with slavery, but it wasn't established to preserve slavery. One thing we don't think about a lot or factor into these uh, current debates about slavery in the founding period is that slavery was not a national institution per se, it was a state institution. Each state dealt with it differently. The northern states, the free states, or the states that were on the path to freedom by this point, um, in no way wanted to enter into a compact that affirmatively uh, endorsed slavery, which is the reason why the Constitution is very, very carefully worded to avoid, first of all, the use of the word slave or slavery at all, which would have had the effect of endorsing slavery, or any words in the Constitution that recognize the justice of property in man. The framers of the Constitution all recognized that slavery was wrong. They also recognized as practical politicians that there was no way that Virginia, the Carolinas, and Georgia, or even Maryland and Delaware would ratify the Constitution if it abolished slavery. And some acknowledgement of slavery therefore had to be made in the Constitution. The Southern states simply would not have gone along with a stronger union had they been faced with the choice between a stronger union that was devised to be anti-slavery and simply continuing under the Articles of Confederation or continuing as more or less independent sovereigns. One of the things that's discussed in the early Federalist Papers is the possibility that the then existing union would simply collapse, would break up into one, two, or three the separate confederacies. What was the compromise? The compromise was to allow slavery local while preserving freedom national. Slavery local meant it was a local institution. Uh, it was not ratified by the Constitution. The Constitution doesn't say slavery is just. It just says we are not touching slavery. Um, and uh, it's, it's something that's strictly a matter of local law. The Constitution's compromises with slavery were three. The Three-Fifths Clause, the Fugitive Slave Clause, 
and this 1808 clause. If the new constitution was going to represent states proportionally, they had to decide proportion according to what. And the two options, the two main options were population or wealth. And both of those would have at least implicitly involved slaves in one way or the other. And in the end, most people thought population was the best way. The abolitionists, if you will, at the founding, um, at the Constitutional Convention, you know how much they wanted slaves represented? Zero fists. <laughs> it was the slaveholding constituents. It was slaveholding states like South Carolina and Georgia and North Carolina that wanted slaves counted as five fifths, if you will, whole human beings, because they wanted, of course, to magnify their power, their authority at the national level. It was actually the people who were most emphatically against the institution of slavery that said slaves shouldn't be counted at all. The North wants, and some uh, want no representation for slaves, and so the compromise is three-fifths, which becomes uh, a major issue in the early 19th century. But the South basically said either we get this clause or there'll be no constitution. And what Governor Morris finally said was, the only hope of abolishing slavery in the South is to first create a powerful federal government and then hope that that federal government over time will abolish slavery in the South. And of course, that's what in fact happened. So that's how the Three-Fifths Clause got into the Constitution over the vehement objections of Northern delegates to the Philadelphia Constitutional Convention. In 1808, uh, the, the Constitution promises the end of the slave trade, which everyone assumes will be also help to kill the institution nationally. Uh, the original date to allow Congress, didn't mandate that Congress did this, but the original date that would allow Congress to ban the importation of slaves, the slave trade into the United States was 1800. And South Carolina essentially says, you, we, you give us 20 years, you give us till 1808 or we're not gonna sign this thing. Now the third uh, clause relating to slavery is the worst of all, uh, the Fugitive Slave Clause. And that clause provided that if any slave escaped into a free state, the free state was under an obligation to return him to his master in a slave state. One of the reasons why it is the worst of all is because unlike the other two, it was not absolutely necessary. The Constitution did not have to say anything about the fugitive slaves, but Certain members in the southern states, again, insisted that that clause be inserted. State delegates, both north and south of the Mason-Dixon line, if you will, are arguing that we can't shore up slavery. This is a toxic, this is poison to our republic. We have got to find a way to get rid of it, but we've got this minority that we've got to deal with. And so they made compromises. Since they anticipated that slavery would eventually go away, they wanted a constitution that wasn't marred by the reference to slavery in the future. So the absence of any reference to slavery um, was deliberate. And during the Constitutional Convention, when proposals were made that would seemingly have endorsed slavery, and then it was pointed out that, wait a second, by saying this, it looks like it could, that could be construed as an endorsement, they immediately voted that out. So none of that language uh, made it into the Constitution. Constitution really just set up a framework within which political debates were meant to happen, which is to say the Constitution did not really have a stance about slavery. It had made compromises with slavery. It had made some concessions. In at least one important respect, it had made an improvement on the condition of slaves in that it allowed for the prohibition of the slave trade. So it is certainly easy to see a scenario in which the Constitution was not created at all and in which Southern slavery lasted longer or in which the process of destroying Southern slavery was even more traumatic than it turned out to be, and it was pretty traumatic in the 1860s. Whereas we know what happened under the actual Constitution. We know that ultimately the geographical spread of slavery was limited, that that in turn brought about the Civil War, which brought about abolition and the, the slow process 
of integration into American economic and, and political and social life of the freed slaves.